apologies for that. There's always a logistical uh, glitch. Maybe we got ours out of the way early for this service. Uh, in, our, in our prayers today, uh, in the, we continue to pray for the whole uh, list of people on our prayer list. Uh, uh, we particularly pray for uh, Lou Weiss, who is uh, nearing the end of his life, and uh, ask that God surround him uh, with, with God's presence. I was able to, um, to go to his house and uh, pray, uh, pray with him. Um, I guess it was New Year's Eve, right after the service, um, and um, took your prayers uh, to to surround him uh, during this uh, these waning moments of his life. Are there other prayer requests this morning, in addition to those that are uh, on our prayer list? I don't see any. Uh, today, before we do our uh, children's prayer um, and our confession and forgiveness, we have a special uh, musical offering. in our children's prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. 
Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so they, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you know that we cannot place our trust in our own powers. As you protected the infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For, the, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. A reading from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who, had, who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. 
Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consola consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about their son. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child, <clears throat> this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, recently Diane Eisenberg reminded us after she had a virtual tour of, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was uh, she was touring, but uh, she kind of stumbled across in the course of this tour, the fact that in some cultures, they don't just have Christmas day or they don't just have the 12 days of Christmas from Christmas to Epiphany, or they don't just have three Kings day, they have 40 days of Christmas. This is particularly true in, in uh, uh, some Latinx cultures, and uh, also interestingly in, uh, I believe in Swedish culture, at least the first congregation that I served was a predominantly Swedish congregation, and that that uh, 40th day of Christmas, which actually is February 2nd, that's a special celebration, Candlemas, the purification. That's the day that this ceremony that we have narrated in today's gospel, that's the day 40 days after birth, that we hear about today. In the Old Testament law, this 40 days was the time allotted for a woman who had given birth to be ready again to be with her husband. 40 days since the birth of the child. And there was a rite of purification there was a rite that included ritual ba bathing and so on. In accordance with the law, Mary and Joseph brought their 
40 day old, month and a half old baby to the temple. There are several layers going on in those ceremonies in the temple. One that I also allu already alluded to was the purification of the mother. The other was the redemption of a firstborn son. In the Old Testament tradition, God has a claim on the firstborn son. It's like the tithe. The first tenth goes to God. Everything else you keep to yourself, for yourself. In this tradition, the firstborn child was dedicated to God. And that meant either that he was anointed and and set aside, set apart to be serving in the temple, or as in most cases, the parents made an offering to God to in effect buy back their child. What's going on in this very strange story, as I said, has many layers. On one level, it is this young Jewish couple keeping the Jewish law, making the trip presumably from Nazareth to Jerusalem for these rites before they returned to Jerusalem, to Nazareth. So it's the keeping of the law, doing what God has told the people of God to do. That's what's going on here. But there's also perhaps an even more powerful dynamic going on here. And it's one that, that tugs at my heart, especially during this uh, terrible time of, of isolation and separation from people. And especially as the prophets Simeon and Anna embody in their cultures very elderly people. Anna, 84 years old, in a culture in which if you live to 40, you were considered quite, uh, quite elderly. Simeon and Anna, all their lives, they have waited for good news. All their lives, they have waited to hear the message that the Messiah is here. Simeon had been promised by the Holy Spirit that he wouldn't die until he had seen the fulfillment of that promise. Anna knew at her first glance at this baby that this was the long, uh, the, the long prophesied Messiah of God, the one who would bring light to all people not just to the Jewish people, but to the Gentiles, to the whole world. As I think of the losses that our congregation, just our modest sized congregation, the losses that we have experienced in the, in the, in the last 10 months or so of this pandemic, a loss, losses not caused by the virus, but losses that we have been unable to adequately um, process as a congregation. We've had, as many of you know, you know, a series of very small funerals for some of our elders who have passed into glory. 
small gatherings. Instead of all of us gathering as we used to do, gathering together to celebrate the life of the person who had died. My hope is that sometime in the not too distant future, we will be able to do that again. Perhaps all of us again together, celebrating the lives of those whom we've lost in this year. But more important, that we gather to celebrate the fulfillment of the promise that God had made to each of those daughters and sons. That promise, very, very similar to the promise that God made to Simeon, that they would see God's salvation. Each of these brothers and sisters that we have lost, for each one of them, the celebration of their life, whether it was just a handful of people in the funeral home, or whether sometime next year there will be the, the ability for the congregation to celebrate together, What we celebrate is God's promise fulfilled. We know, we believe at the center of our message is this promise by God sealed in the blood of Jesus. This promise that nothing in all creation No virus, no tragedy, not even death itself can separate us from God and God's love. Mary, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, each of them, each in his or her own way, heard the good news that because this child was born, the world is changing. Christmas isn't just about some sentimental uh, memory of a birth that took place 2,000 years ago. Christmas is about realigning ourselves with the movement of God's spirit, the movement of God that began with the birth of Christ. That movement that includes God's Christ's birth in our hearts and moves us always to declare the goodness of God, the grace of God, the love of God for each of us and for all people. Mary, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, each held the Lord in his or her arms. Each felt the flesh of that child, God incarnate. In a few moments, as we celebrate communion, we also in an admittedly strange way, 
will experience Christ incarnate, God incarnate. That divine body present somehow, I don't know how, somehow present in this little bit of bread. The blood of the Lamb of God present, I don't know how, in this sip of wine. These are current embodiments of God's commitment to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. These are signs of God's continuing promise to us that not now, not ever, will we be separated from God and from God's love. We embrace this Christ child as we commune with him, with one another, with Mary and Joseph and Simeon and Anna and all the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Here to what we say, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox on us before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He join in the saint with the saints throughout the ages in professing our faith we believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one lord jesus christ the only son of god eternally begotten of the father god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that await earnestly for longer days of wakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve and compassion with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of displacement upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness, especially Landon, Tess, Terry, Linda, Phyllis, Jim, Joanne, Melba, Irene, Ellis, Paul and Margaret, Ginny, Lorita, Lavon, Corey, Carl and Bev, Debbie, Eleanor, Rich, Phyllis, Dick and Jerry, Darlene, Eloise, Rick and Sandy, Ruth, Veronica, Joan, Bob, and a special prayer for Luz, Lou Weiss. Bring him into your glory as he prepares to enter your kingdom. And now we pray for those special people in our lives that we mention either in our prayers or to ourselves. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O oh God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect youth and old across generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Today we celebrate the birthdays of Bill Brady, Carla Savage, Veronica Grimke, and the baptisms of uh, Megan Nickel, Iris Noto, Zoe Stefani, uh, uh, Madeline Stefani, and Janice uh, Z. Mattis. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in, let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For John the Apostle and the Evangelist and all your saints, we give you thanks. 
prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another as, uh, as appropriate. And uh, we have a special offertory music today. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessing for others. With the trees of the field, 
with all the earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join in praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat and drink the gifts of God for all the people of God, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. See you. 
this gift of the body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face be lifted to us. The Lord be gracious to us and give us God's peace. Amen. Go in 
and peace serves the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't have any uh, announcements to make. I wonder if, before we open it up for coffee hour, if there are other people who have announcements for this week. Libby, go ahead. Just a quick reminder to drop off La Trinidad presents by noon on Saturday so that I can get them down to Humboldt Park. Thank you. Any other announcements or things to share with the whole uh, assembly before we open it up for coffee hour? I don't see any. Um, uh, go ahead. Just a point of clarification because um, uh, originally the the piece the arrangement we were going to use was the Harold Dark arrangement of of the in the bleak midwinter, but we ended up uh, going with the Gustav Holtz piece. So I apologize if I I didn't notify Susan of that. It sounded wonderful. Thank you. Any other any other announcements? Yeah, so I just like to thank Susan for all her effort during the holiday season. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome job, amazing. You guys know how in the deaf community how they how they uh, applaud. Yeah. yeah. But she worked thank really hard this uh, this season, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you so much, and and our and our other vocalists. But uh, Susan Susan's definitely the hub. Yeah, thank you. Um, any any other announcements? Then feel free to un, un, uh, unmute yourselves and grab your cup of coffee and let's have at it. <laughs> 